walk you around Optimize Press 2 and setting up a new page. So in Optimize Press 2, it looks a bit different than what it used to um, whenever you were in Optimize Press 1. It installs into WordPress in the same manner as it's like a plugin or a theme, but it looks a lot different in Optimize Press 2. So for instance, I've just clicked on Add New Page, and I have the option of selecting the WordPress section or the Optimize Press settings, right? So it gives you a lot more things to toggle when you're using Optimize Press. And the best way to set up a new page in Optimize Press, I found, is to go to the Optimize Press panel once you've installed the theme. And then you can either go to the dashboard and you can answer the basic questions, uh, like the general questions for your whole site, like the header and logo you can add. Um, you can set up the information for the footer, the SEO options. You can set up all that if you want. Um, you can add in your analytics and all of that. You can get all those settings going, or you can just get right out of the gate, go straight to the page builder and just get started. Um, that's usually what I do. I kind of skip over all these other settings because I'm typically using Optimize Press for something like a landing page or a sales page and a thank you page after you check out uh, with a product online. And then like say a membership area where people can access downloadable files or correspond like in a member group or member area. That's when Optimize Press really is in its best, is whenever you're using it for things like that. With So it's sort of like functionality within, a, like there's optimal functionality that you need a website to do, like for virtual products um, or info, informational product downloads, like videos or audios. Optimize Press is perfect for that. And for setting up landing pages so you can test them to drive people to a page, like to enter their name and email to sign up for something, it's beautiful for that. For actually setting up a full website, I think it's more of a pain in the neck than anything. <laughs> so it has its uses where it's beautiful and it also has areas where if you try to force it to go there, it's just gonna be icky. Um, but anyway, once you have it set up, you can go straight to Page Builder. So after you install the theme, when you go there, you're gonna have to then go through these four steps initially to get to the live editor, which is where I think you have the most fun. So I'm just gonna do a sample page here. And you type in their name, you can then adjust the URL if you want. Um, you could set your permalink settings in your normal WordPress settings, so that's just a standard WordPress thing. Um, and here you can select a page thumbnail if you wish. I typically always use the blank page preset so that I can have the most customization. So I'm just gonna leave it on that. Um, let's see, a valid URL select sign use. Let's see. Um, let's see if that one's working. Sorry about that. Um, so then after we get past that initial step, then we're gonna choose a page type. So these have to do with what type of functionality you want and the type of op um, options it gives you for setting up the page. In this case right now, I just want a landing page. So I'm gonna select landing page. In most cases, you're probably gonna be working with a landing page or the membership page. So I'm gonna to go to landing page and I'm gonna to proceed to step three, which is then going to give me the template to choose from. So there's template styles that are already there. Um, you have the full background styles where you have some beautiful backgrounds you can play with. Um, or you can go to like the classic internet marketing style that we've probably pretty much seen before in Optimize Press um, 1. So then you can select if you want to have um, the white box on a full background or a black box, right? So you get to kind of play around within each template. If I select the classics, I can then select which classic template I want to use. Um, so all of these are pretty standard. now. You know, I kind of hate all of these because it makes me look like an internet marketer if I use them, so I typically don't. Um, I might use the full background styles, so they're, they're kind of beautiful, um, especially if you're swapping out the photo. Uh, but in this case, I'll just select that. Um, I'll go on to step four, and then that's when I can select the landing page background, right? So I can select the image I want, and then I can show a footer or not. I can, then talk, I can then select the on-page functionality, like I can set up my SEO keywords and meta tags. Um, I can decide whether I want to use these other options like the launch fu funnel, if I want to redirect someone and when they exit the page somewhere, if I want to redirect them to another page if they're on a mobile uh, device, for instance. I can set up all of these if I want. Then I'm going to save the settings and go to the live editor. And the live editor is where you kind of have the most fun. So this is kind of the basic page I set up with no image in the background, right? So this is like an element that I can then select whatever image that I want and kind of just mess with each one of these elements, right? So everything in here is an editable element, so which is very different from the normal WordPress, right? I'm basically looking at the page, I click on something, and then I can edit that one area, which is totally different than anything in WordPress before. So that's where it gets a little bit uh, hard to understand if you're someone that's traditionally, um, or if you're used to the traditional Optimize Press 1. Um, 
you can click on everything. Uh, the button, you can decide what kind of um, button you want it to be, whether it's a submit button, whether it's extra content. Um, you can put the opt-in form code here, so whenever they submit the form, um, they get to enter their name and email and go to your autoresponder like Aweber or MailChimp or Sempepper. Um, you can adjust all of this. And the background image, you can change if you want. And then you can always view the public link anytime you want to actually see what you're, uh, what you're doing, right? So you can check out and see what it looks like in the browser. Um, you can go to other things like the layout settings here where you can select, and you can go back kind of to what you initially set up if you want to change something. Color scheme, again, there's no color scheme actually selected for this page, but if you were working on a template that had that. Um, other than that, that's kind of the basics, right? That's pretty much the, the weirdness of Optimize Press 2.0 is that you're working on a template and you're working like live if you choose the live editor, which I find is actually easier. Now I'm going to show you another page I've set up that isn't such a um, short page. It's one that I've actually, it's a full sales page. Um, so I'm going to show you that so you can get a sense of what it's like. So I, I use the page builder and I selected just one of the standard Optimize Press templates just to get into it and go to the live editor. Um, so I'm just going to show you that now so you can see what all you can actually do. So I'm going to go straight to the live editor on this page and you'll see all the elements that I've fit together on this page. So when you go to a blank page, for instance, you basically you start by adding a row. And when you add a row, you then can select whether you want different columns, if you want just one column, if you want um, them to be kind of divided differently, or if you want to have a featured area. There's lots of fun things to do with these featured areas, like an FAQ section or a big headline section with like a blue background. You'll have to try out each one of these to see which one you like. But basically you select, uh, you first add a new row, which is what I did here. This is one row. And then in that row, I basically uploaded, this is just an image, right? So I've uploaded an image. Now, each thing you go down through, each thing here is an element. I've added a row and then I've added elements within that row. So this element is the image element. This is the text element. So basically you go through the whole, all the, of your page and you select elements to add to it, which is just so counterintuitive to WordPress. So this is what really blew my mind for the first few um, hours of using this thing. But as you add elements, so say I want to add an element to this section, I can add any kind of element I want. I can add two columns of text, I can add arrows, audio player, bullets, another button if I want to put a button in there, a calendar, all sorts of fun things that just wasn't available in Optimize Press 1. So there's a lot more here that, I mean, it's just vast what you can create. Um, so you have so much flexibility that you just never had in Optimize Press 1. Which the disadvantage of all of that flexibility is that you have so many possibilities, it can be overwhelming. Um, so if you just want to stick to the basics, um, the thing I like, that's why I like to use the live editor is because I can see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm trying to create. You can see all the different selections here of the different features that come just built in, which is why Optimize Press 2 is awesome because there's all these features just built right in. You just click on it and it adds it straight to your page. So for instance, I could click on tabs and now I get to select a style of tab that I want. And they only actually offer me one style, so I'll select that. And then I get to put like the number of tabs I want, like four tabs. And then I get to write in each tab what I would like. So uh, I'll just do a couple here for you. So sample one, and then you can see each of these tabs, I could change the title. And then I could put content inside of it. When I hit insert, that's gonna actually add now this new component to my page. And if I go to view, if I save and continue, um, it'll save my page and then I can go and view it uh, as, it's, as the actual page. So I'll go view it here in the browser. You can see this is the page when it uh, doesn't have all the elements around it. And you can start to see how it comes together. And you'll see here, this is the element I added. These are the tabbed, this is the tab content, right? And these are all, the, this is again, this is another element I added. Um, and these are like two column rows that I'm adding and then I add an image and then I add a text element. This is a headline element. So you can kind of go through and you can see all of that um, here on the page. So there's so much you can do that just wasn't available before. I'm just going to get back into this page so I can show you. Um, and that's the fun thing. It just takes a little bit to get used to. Um, I'm going to go back down here just to show you the rest of the elements. So there's lots of fun elements like, for instance, let me go down to the bottom of the page and I'm going to add a row. Right, so first I'm going to add a row, and when I hit that, I'm going to say feature area. So say, the thing that's kind of frustrating, I can't figure out what these are until I just click them and hit insert, and then I get to see what kind of featured area it is, which is kind of strange. 
So this is the featured area that I just added. So now I can edit this, right? So this text is already put in here, and I can go and hit the little pencil here, and then I can go and actually edit that text to make it say whatever I want it to say, but it'll still have that same formatting, right? So it's like they pre-format these things for you. Now say I don't want that, I'll just X that out. Yes, I'm gonna remove the row. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna add a new row. Now I'm gonna go back and select another featured area. So I might select this one, insert into page, and then I get to see this is what this featured area looks like. It's a blue background with white text. So now I can click on the pencil and I can edit the text in that blue area, right? So there's all sorts of different, I don't want that. Um, I'll go, I'll try something else. <laughs> but there's all sorts of different uh, featured areas that are really neat, but they're just, you can't see them until you put them into the page. So you basically just have to select it and then see what it looks like. So here's what this one looks like. It has this icon, it has um, sample text, and then it has areas where you can edit all these areas of text and add your elements to the page. It's already pretty much set up for you, which is exciting because once you get used to it, you can set up a page within minutes. It's just getting used to it that takes a while. <laughs> so anyway, that's a little walk around um, Optimize Press 2.0, which again is very different from Optimize Press 1, just showing you all the elements that are on this one sales page. Um, you know, it makes kind of a complex page, but in the end, it's not actually as long as setting it up like traditionally. The amount of time it would have taken me to set this up in WordPress might have been like double. Uh, but now with this Optimize Press, I'm going to get rid of this extra element here. Um, with this Optimize Press 2.0, all of these things are just pre-formatted. So again, you do run into the, the problem of having your, you know, a lot of your elements look like everybody else's elements that has Optimize Press 2.0. But at the same time, you have so many more options that you have the ability to make pages that do look really exciting and customized, uh, such as this one. So this is the final page, uh, which is a long sales page that we've created um, for this one client. And so all of that was just a bunch of pre-formatted elements we created out of Optimized Press 2.0. Does it still look like a you know standard internet marketer's website? It does, but not as much as Optimized Press uh, point or 1.0 right, where all of it really did look the same. And again, I'm still getting used to this uh, very much. So there's many ways I could make this look even more um, customized by, say, adding more images. Like these three areas here, these are mine that I've added in. So, you know, I could customize more of these areas with, with different images, and it would start to have a real uh, custom look and less, you know, um, just plunked right out of the theme. But if you want to just take something straight out of the theme and not have to manipulate too much, it's all right there for you in Optimize Press 2.0. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below or check, check me out on my website, techdivamedia.com. Send me an email and uh, we can talk about Optimize Press or getting you set up or if you want to just completely uh, give up and hand it over to somebody else, let me know.